what if the next podcast you hear was made by AI and not a human? Today, we are uncovering how AI has invaded podcasting and why it could threaten everything we love about it. Sound matters. Be heard. Welcome to the podcast where you get exclusive behind the scenes tips to make your own show sound truly spectacular. This is Podtastic Audio. Hey, what's happening? How are you doing today? Thank you so much for being here. I am Chris, and this is Podtastic Audio, the show which I have designed and created to help you, yes, you, and your little podcast too, make an amazing show for your audience. And one amazing tool to help you make that happen is Riverside.fm. Today's episode is brought to you by Riverside, the ultimate platform for recording studio quality podcasts and videos all from your browser. And the best part, you can try it right now for free. Riverside's newest feature, making creating content easier than ever with multi-track editing. You can adjust individual audio and video tracks, cut out all the crosstalk, and add background images seamlessly. Their AI-powered one-click video editor dramatically reduces editing time, letting you focus on what matters, creating your great content. Riverside also lets you add background music, create dynamic scenes with one single click, and use auto-generated chapters to speed up your editing process. It's all about making your content faster, easier, and better. So head over to Riverside.fm right now, try it for free, and when you get ready to upgrade, you can use my promo code PODTASTIC, and you're going to get yourself 15% off your paid plan. All the details are down in the description, and start creating smarter with Riverside.fm. It seems like almost every single platform you see somehow has got AI involved and written all over it. AI is all the big buzzword we all, we ever hear about. There are a lot of programs and products and things that are all powered using AI. If you're going to look for a job, your resume is guaranteed going to be sorted using AI. Now, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love using AI. In fact, when I first heard about ChatGPT way back, gosh, it's probably been a couple of years now, maybe a year now, when it first kind of hit the market, I tapped into it and I discovered that there were some things that I could use it for to really help out my podcasting process. Some of those things were trying to figure out a really good episode title for each episode. Those are the things I really struggle with. And I use it as a tool to help me put those things together. I struggle with writing stuff. I can't write things to save my life. I was never a writing major So typing, I can type just fine. It's just physically like writing these well-crafted emails or well-crafted show notes. I can't figure that stuff out very well. I could spend a whole entire day doing it or I could have AI do it for me. Those are some examples of what I personally use AI for. And I actually love ChatGPT so much that I created my own GPTs And I gave them to you for free in the previous episode. You want to go back one episode? I talk all about those things, what they can do for you, and they're entirely free to use. Click the link, good to go. But like I said, AI has been a wonderful tool for creating podcast outlines and brainstorming ideas, and maybe even like helping you write some basic things to go along with your podcast things that you normally wouldn't be able to do. And that's where I think AI really, really shines. But we live in a world where everybody is trying to one-up each other on this whole AI explosion, this AI, new AI frontier. The Terminators are watching. Here they come. And they are getting ready for us to just bow down to their to their wishes. It seems like everything we do now It's got some kind of AI infused. If you go on social media and you see some drawn out post, whether it's on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever, and somebody has inserted a ton of emojis into the text, you know that was written by AI. And hey, I'm guilty myself. I use AI for writing stuff 
all the time. It's easier, it's faster, and they can craft something that sounds very, very well written out, things that I could never, ever think of. It writes things so perfectly, way better than I ever could. But with ChatGPT and a lot of these AI prompts, they're all based on you actually prompting it with information first. You got to feed it the information and based on that information, it creates something for you. So technically, it's not actually creating the thing you want it to create. It's just taking the inputs that you have gave it because you were the genius behind the actual like topics that you're going to feed the chat bot and you're going to tell it what you want to talk about. Like, I want to talk about this and this and that. Can you put something together? Or I need to write an email for this person talking about these three things and it needs to be kind but serious and I need to get to the point and the point is this. Those are things that you came up with out of your own brain. ChatGPT is only going to just take those things you gave it and create something that's well-written. That's something that I could never, ever write. So not that long ago, another podcaster introduced to me this new other AI platform by Google, which is entirely free as of right now, called Google Notebook LM. And since it's free, and since it's similar to all the other AI chat things out there, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this thing a try and see what can it do compared to the current chat platforms I already use. Because what I really use AI for is to take my finished MP3 audio file, convert it into a text file, and then get that thing thrown into some chat bot that can figure out the best titles, the best description, show notes, timestamps, all your basic stuff that goes with creating a podcast, all the written content that goes with your actual podcast. That's what I use the chatbots for, and that is what I use AI for to create the podcast. So when I heard about the Google Notebook LM being very similar to the platforms I already use, I figured, why not give this thing a try? After playing around with this Google Notebook LM for a few minutes, I realized it's kind of similar to what I have been using, but the outputs have been much, much different. And I've also noticed what it really does is it will take any form of content, say written text, a website, a link to a YouTube video that can be transcribed. So it can't be a YouTube video with music and background, which was kind of funny because a lot of my earlier YouTube videos that I've liked to create for the other channel have been vacation videos with merely like soundtrack music embedded throughout the video. Not a lot of dialogue. It wouldn't take those. So it only takes video that have pretty much like a transcript, like a talking head, like video kind of video. It'll take that. It'll take anything from like a website. Like you take your whole entire website, drop it in there, and it will basically give you an overview, a summary of what the thing was you gave it, what it was about, key points that were involved. Basically, it's almost as if it creates a book report for your book or your thing, you fed it, which I can see can come in handy if you have this very long text document, say an essay or a book or something along those lines, or maybe a really long like YouTube seminar video. You drop it in there and you say, I want to know the key points from this lecture. And Google Notebook LM will provide you those key talking points right there and tell you where they pulled them from all right there. Now, let you know that this Google Notebook LM is in the experimental phase right now. It is free to use with anybody who has a Google Gmail account. You can set it up for free, start playing around with it right now for free. But like with anything Google creates, they couldn't, you know, kill it and get rid of it at any moment. We don't know. So, there's that. But when I was playing around with it some more, I discovered probably the craziest thing that Google Notebook LM can do, and it is opening the eyes of all the podcasters out in the podcasting community. Everybody's up in arms because this Google AI Notebook LM can create 
fake podcasts. And what I mean by fake podcasts, I'm talking a podcast that sounds like two people are having a regular podcast banter going back and forth, discussing whatever content you feed it. And it sounds, well, it sounds pretty good. And with any of these kind of tools, we open the dangers of not being too authentic at all and creating a flood of all of these fake AI-generated podcasts. Actually, right now as I record this, uh, what is it? Listen Notes has been really pissed off that all of these fake podcasts have flooded their system, that they went after them. They designed a tool that will actually hunt down and remove an AI-generated podcast, especially ones that were created using Google's Notebook LM. And they have hunted them down, and they have flagged them, and they put an entire list together. So as of right now, that list sits at over 1,200 different podcasts, excuse me, 1,200 different fake podcasts that have been created and put together and have actually been out there using this Google Notebook LM. Now, the Google Notebook LM podcast, it's kind of funny because it's a male and a female with the same voices and every single Google LM podcast that you will ever hear will be using the exact same people. Google's LM notebook thing does not let you choose different voices. It's already set. It's preset. And in fact, when you give it the information, you do not have a choice on what it says about your information. It creates the podcast all by itself, completely generated by AI. So if you decide to just drop in whatever you want in there, whether it's a YouTube video, some fake text you had AI write to you in the first place, you can put it into Google Notebook LM and it will spit out an entire podcast episode with two co-hosts. These co-hosts, they don't have any names, but once you hear them, you'll recognize their voices over and over again, especially with all of these, what, 1,200 now fake podcasts? By the time this episode goes live, it could be 2,000 podcasts that are out there using this very same tool. So to tell you, or should I say show you what I'm talking about, I ran some of my stuff right through this chatbot new podcast creating machine at Google. And the first audio clip I have is the podcast discussing what I've said in a YouTube video talking about my podcasting journey. Check this out. By 2019, he had spent a good decade as a dedicated listener, basically watching podcasting evolve right in front of him. He was more than ready to throw his own hat in the ring. But how did he even begin? It seems like a huge jump going from listener to creator. It is. At first, Chris thought it'd be as simple as copying those radio shows he loved. You know, get some basic equipment, have some fun, don't overthink it. The classic of friends. You just jump in and figure it out along the way, right? Yeah. Sometimes that's the best way to start. Exactly. And that's what he did. Little did he know that 2020 would, well, shake things up a bit, both for the podcasting world and his own journey. Ah, uh, yes, 2020, the year that changed, well, everything. And that includes podcasting. Suddenly everyone's stuck at home, desperate for some connection, and boom, the podcasting boom begins. Now, if I didn't tell you that was AI, it would be very hard for somebody, the average person, to you know say, like, that's not AI. That sounds like a regular you know podcast. It sounds pretty real. So then I had them look over my Podtastic Audio website, which you can find at podtasticaudio.com. And this is what they had to say about that. Um, one thing I noticed, too, is that they had a ton of great listener reviews. They do, yeah. Which, like, just goes to show that people are really finding value in what they're doing. For sure. And it's not just about the technical stuff either. What else? They talk about audience growth, monetization, like the whole nine yards. It really is like the A to Z. It is, yeah. It really feels like they're saying, hey, we're indie podcasters too, and we want to help you succeed. Yeah, absolutely. So if you had to pick one big takeaway from all of the stuff that they're talking about on Podtastic Audio, what would you say it is? You know, for me, it's that... Creating a great podcast is less about fancy equipment and more about passion. Now, some of the things that everybody is talking about when it comes to these fake AI-generated podcasts is that they have no personality. 
They have no emotion. They have no, like, you cannot connect as an individual to the actual podcast. Maybe you can. If you didn't know that these were actually fake AI created creations, just pull that out of thin air. These people do not exist. They are not real. They are completely fabricated out of an AI computer or however it works. Listen, I don't work for Google. I'm not a genius when it comes to AI or software or creating any kind of code. I don't know any of that stuff, but I can tell you this much. These AI created podcasts, they actually lack their emotional depth and the potential to maybe, you know, mislead listeners if you think they're actually real and you connect with them, maybe even fall in love with them. That'd be crazy if that actually happened. So just for funsies, I decided to take the Listen Notes actual article that described the dangers of all of the AI robotic, you know, fake podcasts that have flooded their system. So I took that article, dropped it into Google Notebook LM to have the fake podcast make a podcast about their fake podcast and to see what it actually said. So check this out. And I'll be honest, the whole robotic voice thing already bugs me, even in ads. Oh, tell me about it. But you're saying the real issue is bigger than just like a few awkward pauses or weird pronunciations? Way bigger. This isn't just about AI podcasts being, you know, bad. Right. It's about the potential damage to the whole podcasting ecosystem. Okay, so let's unpack that. What are we really talking about here? Well, think about it this way. You're a podcaster, right? You've put your heart and soul into this show you're making. Hours of research, writing, recording, all that. Oh, tell me about it. Don't even get me started on the editing. Yeah, exactly. It's a ton of work. And then your show, the one you poured yourself into, it basically gets buried under a mountain of AI-generated stuff. Stuff that probably took, what, an afternoon to make? So, like the Mr. Fake Podcaster himself said, there will be a giant flood of all these fake shows hit the market. So how do you make sure your show truly stands out? Well, I guess it goes back to the basics. It goes back to you being absolutely real and unfiltered and maybe not as quite polished and maybe even bust out that Blue Yeti microphone and use it in the bathroom 10 feet away and get that really raw, you know, indie podcaster sound that I've try to steer away from and try to get as polished as possible. But now it's kind of hard because the polished podcasts are now the fake ones. So how do you stand apart from the fake shows that are out there? Well, one thing is for sure, if you're going to create some kind of fake podcast, whether it's an intro or maybe do some kind of samples like I did or whatever you want to do with it, maybe just alert somebody and say, this was created using AI. I know if you're on Instagram and if you post anything that is AI creation of any kind on it, especially an image or something like that, there's a little box they make you click. It says, was created by AI. You click the box and everybody's cool. Because if you don't do that, it can flag it, kick you off, all kinds of things. And now, listen notes, they're going in and hunting down all these fake podcasts. I don't know how they're doing it. Some kind of software some kind of program they built. Maybe it's AI hunting down AI. It's like Terminator after Terminator. I don't know. But that's what they're doing right now. They're hunting these down. And once you hear these voices, like I said, every single podcast that uses this Google Notebook LM will be sounding exactly like these samples I played for you today. Once you hear these samples, you will not unhear these samples because if you hear a podcast or even a YouTube video, which I heard one today, Using this exact thing, you'll know these are fake. They were created using Google Notebook LM. Now, to have a little fun with this robotic podcast machine, I have decided to take my podcast, throw it into there, and have it review my episode and come up with something. Then take that fake podcast and put it exclusively on my YouTube channel. Link below in the show notes if you want to check that out. But it's like the companion show, and I label it created by AI. This is the fake podcast with the fake AI robots reviewing my show. So if you want to check that out, go right ahead. And some of the things they've said about my show I think are pretty cool. I mean, who doesn't like a cool hype squad for your podcast? 
It's like having a special marketing podcast for your actual podcast. No different than running your podcast through any of the chat bots and coming up with all of the amazing social media content or text content or any of those kind of things. It's just in an audio format with people that kind of sound like they're real, but they're really not. Is this the future of marketing? Having a fake podcast, like review your product and actually create the podcast based on your own thing, like an actual commercial? Maybe. Who knows? I think it's only going to get better. Now, like I said earlier, who knows if Google's actually going to keep this thing going? Maybe they'll cancel it. Who really knows? Who knows a Google over there? We don't really know. Remember uh, Google Plus? Yeah, what happened to that? It's supposed to be the Facebook killer. Yeah, that died. Anyways, I think the fake Google Notebook LM podcast machine is pretty cool, but there are some problems. Like I said earlier, people will flood the market and try to get revenue and ad spots with their fake podcasts. And what happens is that our regular podcasts become just buried into the void of all the other fake podcasts out there. And thank you to Lucid Notes being able to like filter these things out and hunt down all these fake podcasts that are out there. And I think as time goes on, as you start to hear these particular voices on other different shows, so you click on a new podcast, you check it out, and you immediately hear those two voices, the AI podcasts, I would think lots of people will probably turn off those shows and not listen to another episode. I think at first, they might get a few clicks, but... Once people realize that these are all fake and they're just fake shows, that they actually cannot connect with the hosts. The hosts are fake. You cannot connect with them on a personal level. There's probably somebody actually, you know, behind the scenes doing it all. Yeah, I get all that. But as a listener, you cannot connect with a fake robot. I've always said that audio podcasting, especially, is a very intimate, It's a very personal, it's a very one-on-one connection between you, the host, and the listener. You are right there in their brain. People listen to podcasts usually alone, not in a big, giant group. It's not like a big, giant movie theater. It's just you and me having a direct connection and a conversation that you get to hear. Like, you are right here with me. We're just hanging out. The fake podcasts, although they sound very polished and they're very quick, the banter is very quick. That's one thing I've always noticed with these things. They finish each other's sentences so quickly. The very first time I actually heard it, I thought it was a regular podcast that somebody like over edited. They went super choppy choppy on the editing and they made things super, super quick because nobody actually talks that way when they're actually bantering back and forth. Some of them do. Like some of those like morning radio shows that are super polished and super quick and super like, you know, bells and whistles and the morning zoo format. Some of those are like that, but that usually only lasts a few minutes. In between songs, they come in talking about some hot new celebrity that's dating some other hot new celebrity and something really quick. We're talking maybe a few minutes worth of uh, dialogue back and forth. Boom, boom, out onto the song. But to continue that for an entire podcast, and to be so quick in the way they were talking, and they never, ever go off topic. And one key giveaway with this whole Google LM podcast machine is that they always go into something they they like to call a deep dive. If they start off with, we're going on a deep dive, this is a deep dive, deep dive, my goodness, hey, Google, if you're listening, because I know you are, please get rid of that deep dive jargon. And also, if you could, Freddie, please give us options on our podcast robot host. If we can choose like a different type of voice or personality, then you can really mix things up and get really crazy. But as of right now, you only have like the one choice and it's this couple and that's all you get, which makes it easier for people like us to really spot out whether or not this was a fake podcast created by Google Notebook LM. Once they evolve this thing, if they do... And they do give you more choices and different voices, maybe even your own voice. Can you imagine that? If you have your own podcast and you throw it in there and it it is able to create a fake podcast 
based on your own voice and your guest voice and your host voice, and you don't have to do anything. That's where things start to become very scary. We already can do that stuff right now with things like Eleven Labs, but all Eleven Labs really does is it takes the script or the text that you already fed it and it just reads that. What Google Notebook LM is doing is creating everything out of thin air, the dialogue, what they say and how they say it. It's all created right there in Google Notebook LM. So Google, if you want to make this thing cool, maybe change it up a bit. But as the indie podcaster me, I have to say that we probably should focus on creating amazing value and amazing content and delivering it in a fun and entertaining way. Bring the fun. Bring I say double down on the fun right now because the Google Notebook podcast, although they had some cool little fun moments back and forth here and there, but you can really go beyond what they can possibly do because you are human and you have emotions and humor and talent that they do not have. I always said, tap into what makes you special. It's not all about the content sometimes. Content is great. I know content is king. They always say that. But your good content with your amazing personality is going to outshine these stupid AI robot podcasts. So if you want to try it out right now, you can for free. If you have a Gmail, Google account, and most people do. So head on over to Google Notebook LM. I'll put a link to it in the show notes so you have access to it if you want to check that out. Play around with it, maybe experiment with it, but please, for love of God, do not make fake podcasts and then just ask advertisers to jump on board and try to sponsor your fake podcast show, even though it may be tempting. Trust me, I was tempted too to make some kind of variation of the podcast. and That's exactly what I did exclusively on YouTube. It's reviewing this podcast, but the input, the actual content is coming directly from me. It's my show. They're reviewing my show. And I exclusively say that on there, that this AI robot podcast is reviewing my actual podcast. So with AI being the hot topic in the podcasting and creation space, how do you use AI for your podcast? Do you use it at all? If you do, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. You can reach out on all these social media platforms, which are listed on my website, podcasticaudio.com. And I love to hear from you. And until next time, happy podcasting.